One is justice for everybody. And you're so close and then they yank it out. Child sex abuse survivors dealt a crushing blow. We told you this week an amendment seeking to open a window of opportunity in court for old abuse claims is being kept off the ballot because of an advertising mistake. So what happens next and how do we get here? Well, it started with the explosive 2018 grand jury report, which named hundreds of predator priests across the state. And just last month, the state house passed an amendment that would give abuse survivors a two year window to file claims if voters approve. But on Monday, the governor announced the secretary of state was resigning for not advertising the proposed amendment. And now survivors may be forced to wait for justice. Channel 11's Aaron Martin joins us live in the studio. And Aaron, what happens now? Well, David, a two and a half year wait for justice just got a little bit longer this week for survivors, all because of what's being called human error. But hope isn't lost just yet as the focus turns to a little known article in Pennsylvania's Constitution that hasn't been used in decades. I understand that it is not a guaranteed that the people of the Commonwealth will vote yes on this, but I have hope. That is one thing I've hung on to for 45 years. This is survivor Ryan O'Connor last week when it looked like a constitutional amendment opening a two year window for child sex abuse victims to sue their perpetrators would be in front of the voters in May. But over the last few days, that hope has been tested. Why? Why now? Why this? Why of all things, of, of all bills, this when we are conceivably three months away from having a retroactive window, does this happen? On Monday, the Pennsylvania Department of State apologized for its failure to advertise the first passage of the amendment by the General Assembly last year, meaning the process of its passage in two separate sessions before going to the voters must start from the beginning. It led to the resignation of Secretary of State Kathy Bookvar, who steps down tomorrow. Attorney General Josh Shapiro and Senate Democrats initially suggested a legislative fix, but questions over its constitutionality crippled efforts for change in 2018, and Duquesne constitutional law professor Bruce Ledovitz sees a similar outcome. And you'd be asking the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to change 100 or 125 years of, of uh, precedent, probably the court would not have done that. So. But there is one other option that hasn't been used in Pennsylvania for nearly 50 years, an emergency constitutional amendment. It requires a two-thirds majority vote in both the State House and Senate before going to the voters. Today, Representative Mark Rossi, a survivor himself, announced he's working with House and Senate leadership on an emergency amendment. We will look at that. We will look at every opportunity. But the mere fact that its history shows that this has not happened in the past tells you the difficulty of those types of things. O'Connor has waited 45 years to hold the priest who sexually assaulted him as a child accountable. Now it's unclear how long that wait will be extended. You're sick in your stomach and then you're angry and then you kind of become pragmatic again. And I think that's what gets me through a lot of things is I just try to be pragmatic and as realistic as I can. So, Aaron, realistically, how long will these survivors have to wait? Well, David, there is some good news on this front. In fact, I've been on the phone with legislators all day. They tell me there is an agreement in the works right now for this emergency constitutional amendment. If that were to happen, theoretically, this could be back on the ballot as soon as May. But there's some work that still needs to be done, so we'll be watching it closely. Okay, very good, Aaron. Thanks so much.